The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Welcome to Freedom Friday with Carl Gallops. You are in the Oval Office, the White House of Gulf Coast Talk Radio, broadcasting to parts of four states along the Gulf Coast and broadcasting to the nation and the world by live stream on the Internet. Carl is not ashamed of the Word of God, the Constitution, or the Declaration of Independence. He does not care about political correctness, nor does he depend upon a teleprompter or popularity polls. Carl stands for truth, reason, and common sense. Carl firmly believes that America is God's gift to the world. If any of that interests you, you are at the right place. Freedom Friday on 1330 WEBY. Now, here's Carl Gallops. All right, welcome back, Gulf Coast. Welcome back, America. 1330 WBY. We're broadcasting live this afternoon, and we are broadcasting to four states along the Gulf Coast. And, and of course, we stream live over the Internet at three different locations, and we stream live over your smartphone. Go to carlgallops.com up in the top right-hand corner, and you can get the connection to all of those. Plus, we podcast. And so we have listeners and callers from coast to coast. Uh, email box uh, that blows up with uh, callers. In fact, I've got several. I was just looking out a moment ago from very places around the United States, people saying, you know, when Mike Zulu comes on, ask him this, and when Mike Zulu comes on, ask him that, and so people are really, really excited about every time Mike comes on, because we have people from all over the world that download our podcast, they don't listen live because of the time differences and the inconvenience of all that, a lot of folks are sleeping right now while we're talking, so, uh, but uh, we get tons of feedback all over the internet, our postings, Facebook, a blog spot, and, uh, and uh, YouTube, and because people are concerned about the this Obama fraud case and the cold case posse, Mike Zulo, the lead investigator, Sheriff Arpaio, the one that cranked that thing up, and 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 for all of the evidence we have uh, thus far, um, there is nothing that would point us away from the fact that the birth certificate proffered by the White House, the only identifying document anyone has ever seen on who Obama is, is a complete fraud, a fabricated fraud. Mike Zulu, thank you for being being a part of Freedom Friday this afternoon. Hi, Carl. How are you? I'm doing great. It's great to have you with us. Mike, there's so many things I want to talk to you about. And I know. And by the way, folks, if you want to call and be a part of the show, please do. 850-623-1330. You can ask Mike questions. You can uh, make your comments. You can express your opinions, even if you're an Obama bot. Now, to the Obama bots, they often complain because, well, Carl, cut me off. Well, first of all, I don't cut all the Obama bots off, only the ones that call up. That, and, and immediately go into character assassination. Uh, or they, they just throw out false information, disinformation, stuff that has been handled and spoken to on this show for years, and they go back and readdress it as though we've never handled it. Of course I'm going to cut that off. If you've got something new to say, something fresh to say, a fresh challenge, uh, Mike Zulo and I have been challenging the Obama bots for the last year or more, bring us 100% verifiable courtroom-ready evidence evidence that that birth certificate is a complete eligible document that is completely uh, 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 accurate and viable and will back away from this. So please do. No one's ever been able to do that yet. So we invite you to come on. But Mike, listen, you and I are both aware of a video that's just going crazy. I, I looked this morning. I think it had 10 hits when it first went up. I was looking a moment ago, and it's locked in. It's frozen at well over 1,000 now. So it's just, it's, it's, I say frozen because unless you pay YouTube money uh, for four or five days, it, it, they, they just released a, a, a trifling amount of how many views it really has. But, but Mickey Booth, Mike, who wrote Memoirs of a Community Organizer from Hawaii, Mickey Booth, who you know and I know, we know her husband, Fred, who worked for the Hawaii uh, PD, Hawaii Five O for years. In fact, he was uh, quite a high-ranking official there at one time. And, uh, but she wrote this book and uh, just uncovering tons of information about this fraud that's in the White House and Hawaii politics and all of that. She approached her congressman the other night, Mark Wayne Mullen, and, uh, and, and presented, offered him the, 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 the um, 200 and something point uh, affidavit that you prepared. Uh, Mike, and the congressman wouldn't even touch it, wouldn't take it, and then kind of condescended and talked down to her. You've seen that video, haven't you, Mike? 
Yeah, I did see it, Carl. Yeah. I've got a 45-second clip. Now, the video is about three and a half minutes. Folks, if you want to see the whole thing, go to carlgallops.com, click on the Freedom Friday link, and then when you get to the Freedom Friday page, at the very top in yellow, you'll see it. Congressman Wayne Mullen uh, community uh, uh, event uh, video, et cetera. You, you can't miss it. It's right at the top of the page. Mike, let me play. I'm going to play a 45-second clip. Then I'm going to ask for your comment on, the, on, on how he responds to Mickey Booth, okay? Okay. Okay, good. Let's let's roll it. Joy, roll, roll and it. And I believe what you're saying, and I don't support this president whatsoever. But he's not a real president. But, man, we, we, we lost November 6th. We had the opportunity to get another president in there, and like it or not, So he is by the law. He's not going to be held accountable to a crime that is, goes to the very root of what he's doing to this Constitution. He was a fraud. He got in. He's got all... Maybe, here's the all I the evidence say, that it's a fraud. I want you to stay, and you can't stay. But we're got a lot of meetings and all that. No, he's above the law. There's nothing, nothing you can do. Guys, it has nothing to do with anybody being above the law. Please understand what I'm saying when I say this. We had four years to take care of that. Our country's facing some serious issues. <laughs> well, Mike. You know, basically what the guy says, and folks, that's a 45-second clip of a three-minute interchange like that. Basically what he says is, Obama was able to slide his way back into office even though it was illegal and unconstitutional. We, quote, voted him back in, so we got to move on. And, of course, Mickey's point was, wait a minute. Are you saying if you can get away with defrauding the entire American public, if you can get away with it, there's nothing you can do? And basically the congressman says, yes, that was his attitude. What, what do you say about that, Mike? I'm, I'm almost speechless. I, I don't understand that type of reasoning. Um, you know, it's almost like saying, you know, the bank robber went in on Monday, you know, stole $7,500 and then comes back in and deposits 6000 on Thursday – so we'll let it slide. Yeah, because because you couldn't catch him in the act, so there's nothing you can do now. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. You know, and it was a lot of double talk. It's, hey, I agree with you, but. Yeah, yeah. You know, and when this was going on before the second election, what we heard from Congress people were, we're going to take him out at the ballot box. Right. We're going to beat him on policy and right. all this other stuff. And that was the excuse they gave us then right. for not wanting to pursue the matter. Right. Well, basically... This is my opinion, and you don't have to agree. They're a bunch of wimps. I, I mean, they just, where are the men, Mike Zula? Where, where are the men? And, and, and I'm talking about, you know, where, where, are the, where are the strong women? Because there are women congressmen, too. But, I mean, there's more, more of them are men. Where are the men in this country? I mean, they, they're terrified. They're afraid. They're wimps. And like you said, they gave the excuse the first uh, four years. Well, we'll just, we'll beat him at the ballot box. Well, so, so you're going to let him rule uh, unconstitutionally for four years? Well, we'll just beat him. Well, they didn't beat him. So now they're saying, well, you know, you elected him. You put him back in office, so now we're stuck with him. What kind of rationale is that, Mike Zula? <laughs> you know, Carl, your guess is as good as mine. Oh, oh my. anything to avoid the issue. I, I know. It's um, unbelievable. Listen, you've got callers on the line. Let's take some calls because we promised folks they could talk to you. And if you want to be a part of the show, folks, 850-623-1330. Mike Zula, who is the lead investigator of the cold case posse, Obama fraud case, he's on with us this afternoon. Leslie, you're calling from Texas. Thank you for listening from Texas, and thanks for calling. And you want to ask Zula something about the birth certificate. Go ahead. Hi. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, it's not necessarily about the birth certificate per se, but it relates to these okay. congressmen. Okay. Um, my understanding of the law is that if someone is aware of a felony and they do nothing about it, they're guilty of misprison. And I'm going to be meeting with my congressman tomorrow at noon and i've put together my talking points my number one topic with him is asking him to support steve uh, stockman stockman mm -hmm. and i watched a couple of times that video with mickey mickey, mickey booth uh -huh. and uh you know the guy was really rude and he wouldn't let her talk yeah he, and he... i you know i believe we need to let them know that we know the law, right? and we need to get them to, first of all, admit that they know that a felony has been committed. Mm -hmm. That's good. And, you know, they may continue to say there's nothing we can do about it. Mm -hmm. They are...
are guilty of misprison, and we need to file lawsuits with well, our Congress people. Well, Leslie, that's that's an interesting proposition. Uh, Mike, I, I've got an opinion on it. I know you do as well. Uh, what would you say to Leslie about that? So you've got a congressman who, who if, you, if you can get him to admit, look, we know that the Constitution has been violated. We know that this birth certificate is a forgery, but I'm a, I'm a congressman. I raised my hand and swore to protect the Constitution, but I'm not going to do anything about it. And she says that's, that's criminal. What, what do you say, Mike? Well, I, I think the problem with that is on the surface it sounds good, but I, the problem you're going to have with it is the I know it's a forgery. Until that document is adjudicated as such, nobody knows. Right. And the excuse there is going to be the figure of speech. I know. I'm, I'm sharing my belief with you. Right. But there is no adjudication of the document. There is nothing that's, to really point to it as being and, a forgery other than the allegation. Well, that's right. Well, yeah. And, and let, me, let me rearrange your words there. And, of course, if I say something wrong, just correct me. Um, we've got plenty to suggest that it's a forgery. But what you're saying, the point you're making is a legal point, and it's absolutely valid. And that is you can say, as the investigator, the lead investigator, you can say, I know it's a forgery. However, for it to be legally adjudicated, in other words, for, for, a, for a court to hear it, Supreme Court or, the, or Congress to do an investigation, and for them to examine all the facts and, and then say, okay, this is a forgery. That's what we need legally because we're a nation of laws. We're a nation of adjudication. We need for an adjudicating body to look at your evidence. You know the evidence you have. You know it's a forgery, but, we've, but you're not a judge. You're the, you're the investigator. So now we need a judge, whether that's a congressional panel or Supreme Court, whatever, to say, yes, we agree, this is a forgery. That is, is, isn't that a correct analysis? Yeah, I'm glad you uh, restated that for me because I, I, in retrospect, it didn't come out correct. It, it doesn't really matter what I believe. Right. It's what we can prove in a court of law. That's right. Exactly. And that's what we have to get. That's right, and that's where you've been moving, and our pile has been moving, and I've been doing my little part to try to help. We're trying to move it. We believe, I know Sheriff Arpaio has said from the beginning, he believes, we believe, that the place for it to be is in a congressional investigation and hearing, correct? Yes, that's yeah. what he believes, yeah. and yeah. I think he's, yeah. he's right about that. It's going to be the quickest remedy if you could get it. Right, right. Let's take another caller. But the only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.